Well, it's being asked, so let's talk about it. Hello fellow Bills fans, Sean Rogers Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! Come join Paul and Mario at Diamond Hawk Golf Course Saturday, September 11th for the hashtag sports not so invitational. Come golf with these idiots in this four-person scramble, which will feature golf with cart, dinner, hole-in-one contest, silent auction, and a live show with all proceeds benefiting Matthew 25 Farms. Registration can be found in the description of this video. And if you'd like to sponsor, email us at htagsports at gmail.com to help raise money for this great charity. You? Are you signing up for that? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Thanks for joining. This is Paul from Hashtag Sports. Uh, of course, join us for the Hashtag Sports Golf Tournament September 11th. Uh, all money is going to uh, Matthew 25 Farms, a phenomenal cause that donates nearly all its produce to local food shelters uh, and food banks. So thank you again for supporting them. Come join us for dinner, a party afterwards. Uh, if you're not in for golf, there is a dinner package available. Registrations and the link below. Uh, Mario and I also have t-shirts, believe it or not. Uh, they will be coming and making their appearance um, back here soon. But let's get to the topic at hand. Um, and again, thank you to those who are subscribed. If you're not, click that subscribe button. Click that like button. Uh, and of course, leave a comment. We really do read every single comment and try to respond to everybody. So it's finally happening where we have to talk about this, right? And... We've avoided, and the title of this video, I think, kind of says it all. We've avoided this topic here at Hashtag Sports for quite some time. And, and there's a very specific reason for that. And that is, one, um, it is incredibly polarizing. Uh, and two, there's a lot of variables at play that are almost impossible to project how they're going to play out. And because of that, I don't want to feel like we're alienating any population I don't want to make it feel like we're pushing any sort of agenda. And because of that, we've avoided the topic um, of what C-19 is going to do to the NFL, uh, specifically your team that you love and, and uh, you know, what takes up a vast majority of your time. The NFL has done a phenomenal job of taking a sport that only lasts 17 weeks and turning it into a 52-week spectacle. They really have. There's only a couple months out of the year where something – isn't going on, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. Uh, it's actually kind of impressive, to be to be perfectly honest with you. And we're getting to a point now where the season's about to start, things are about to get real, and we have to talk about how this team is approaching uh, vaccinations with players, how the media is responding to it, how the players are responding to it, and ultimately what's important. So let's kind of start with where we are right now. Right now, the team is said to be right around an 80% vaccination rate. Now, mind you, there's 80 players on the roster. So that means 16 players are unvaccinated to get you to 80% right around that time period. And I think a lot of people know who's, who some of those players are just by recent events. And I think it's very clear to see that the rules are different for one versus another. Now, whether that's fair or whether it's not is not for us to decide. We can complain about it all day long, and, and in some cases, justly so. But whether it's right or not, I'm sure will be legal battle for years to come. The NFL is setting rules that could be seen as discriminatory, and it is something that could be a legal battle in the future. Uh, players' choice versus punishment, fines, things of that nature. And really what the NFL's goal is right now is to try and find players into submission. Um, look at every opportunity they can to make sure that player safety is, is there, but also find the players who are not following the rules, of which an unvaccinated player clearly has more to follow than a vaccinated player. 
The time frame for return, significantly different for a vaccinated player versus an unvaccinated player. And while there are medical guidelines that are supposed to be guiding these policies, I think it's very easy to look at and say this doesn't feel necessarily fair. And people are going to feel a variety of different ways about that. And again, we're not giving you any opinion. We're just giving you observation. But here's why I say this is the one and only time we're going to talk about this. The rules aren't the same. And the NFL is willing to take the chance that they will be in legal battles for the next X amount of years over this versus having games postponed and canceled that ultimately damage revenue. Let's be honest. The NFL has done a phenomenal job of becoming a round-the-clock sport. From a sport that only happens for a few months out of the year into a daily spectacle, the NFL has really turned themselves into a circus and one that we all watch us included you're watching this video because you're part of that circus right we want to see how all this plays out we have our popcorn ready we're watching how this all plays out whether or not we agree with it or not is completely personal and while our reasons for that might be justified to us the nfl is basically a group of 32 teams managing 53 players independently. And those teams can manage those players how they want, just as long as they fall within the guidelines of NFL policy. Whether that be fair or not, every team has its own rules. Every team is basically a company with a bunch of independent contractors. The NFL dropped their not-for-profit status back in 2015. I guess that's something that a lot of people forget about, right? So they originally were a 501c6 corporation, which basically said they were a not-for-profit organization, which we all know is complete garbage, right? When they dropped that uh, 50, or when they dropped that 503c6, um, Roger Goodell's salary was 44 million dollars that year. So. Uh, let's call it like it is, right? Now that they're a private organization, they don't have to reveal salaries unless they want to. They're not required to like they would have been under the law. And while they can say that that had no ultimate change in how they were going to be structured, the reality is that there's reasons why they did that. Could we say this is a reason? I suppose, right? So that way they could impose different rules and regulations, although labor, uh, according to labor law, is supposed to be identical to standard labor laws. The NFL always likes to take some semblance of risk for profit, and they have for a long time. This is no different. And I guess that's sort of what I'm here to tell you. Right now, People are jumping on players because of their beliefs or why or why not they are or aren't vaccinated. And I, I think that's because so much of us take this so personally. This is such a major part of our lives. And while a uh, Buffalo Bills team will be part of our existence for decades, it may be just a few years of existence on a player's radar. They might spend their whole careers here. They may just spend one year here. They may be here for a few weeks and then uh, are ultimately released from the roster and have to go find a job somewhere else. We take what they do personally. We connect with them even though we don't know them as players. We really want them to be great. And as a community, that's a phenomenal thing. We really do want what is best for our players both on and off the field. And it is very hard to draw that line between when that is personal and when that is professional as fans. Regardless of what happens within the 17 weeks that happen in the NFL, I think it's really, really, really important to remember that the choices that players make every week are not equatable to what we go through on a daily basis, right? Uh, Isaiah McKenzie having to miss five days of work is not equatable to me having to miss five days sitting in my office in Lockport, New York. It's not the same. My job does not in any way care whether I am vaccinated or not. That is personal. They don't care. I do not work in an office setting. They have not told me that I need to get it or not, although they have encouraged me. But I don't have to pay fines if I don't follow the rules. 
The amount of scrutiny that NFL players are under is just not equatable. It's false equivalence. That's an important point to remember, is that the rules aren't the same. A lot of us want to be professional athletes or wanted to be professional athletes, but look at the landscape that we're in today. It is a nasty shark tank of crazy. Whether you want to be a part of that or not, or whether you have feelings on whether players should be vaccinated or not, we all take this very seriously. And don't think the players don't. They very much take this seriously. They're very passionate about this. But what is a team to us for the rest of our life may not be their team for the rest of, your, the rest of their life. What I'm saying is, this isn't a time to eat your own. We don't want to do that. That's not what we're here for. We're here as a community to try and support each other. We're here as a community to try and encourage each other. We're here as a community to try and get this all done together. Win a Super Bowl for this team. Now, mind you, that is going to come at uh, immense cost once you start looking at how the rules are going to play out for unvaccinated players once we actually get to game time. The NFL has structured rules that are challenging to unvaccinated players. And the rules for vaccinated players are a little bit different. All that is choice. And a lot of people will say, well, just get vaccinated. Then you don't have to worry about that stuff. For other people, that decision is bigger than that. And while I cannot relate, I respect and understand that everybody gets a choice. And that's when I say we're not going to spend time talking about this. This will be the one and only time. It's because structurally the rules are different. The variables change every single day with relationships that change every single minute. I'm not going to pretend to know how an NFL locker room works. I'm not going to pretend to understand what it's like on an NFL sideline, nor am I going to pretend to understand what happens in an NFL meeting room. Each team is handling this the best way they know how. And there's millions of dollars at stake every single day. So don't think this isn't being taken seriously. It is being taken seriously. These are also independent contractors, players. They're independent contractors. And the pressure they could get put on them by an organization has to be absolutely immense. Something that I wouldn't wish on anybody that I know. And yes, you could say, well, they're making millions of dollars, Paul. You're right. Some of them are. Not all of them. Some of them. And I can promise you that players like Tanner Gentry are looking at what has played out in the wide receiver group over the last week. And if he's not vaccinated, he's like, well, if that matters, I might need that leg up if he's not. I, I don't know if he is or not. It's not really my business to know whether he is or not, to be perfectly honest. I'm never going to come in contact with Tanner Gentry. I'm never going to come in contact with any of these players directly, nor their staff. I do not know any of them. I will not come in contact with any of them. And I guess that's sort of the overarching point here. Football is important to me because I love it. Football is important to players because it's their job. Those two things are not equatable. I love watching football. and I love talking with you guys in Hashtag Nation. It is. It's of immense importance to me. This is, their, this is a player's job. This is their livelihood. This is how they feed their family. And if players are going to lose their job over vaccinated status, that is a choice that they may be making knowledgeably. But there's going to be legal battles on this for years. And... I have no idea how this is going to play out over the course of the season. It's a dangerous topic, to be perfectly honest. Once uh, an unvaccinated player plays against a player who tested positive the next day, what's going to happen? We need to keep everybody safe to the best of the medical knowledge that we have at the time. And the NFL is going to make their rules based off of what they feel is best for the league not best for the players don't don't think that these rules are best for the players the nfl's job is to continue to keep the wheels moving to make sure that games can be played 
So they're going to limit any opportunity they can for uh, media outcry over unvaccinated players. And they're going to make the rules harder for them. They're going to say it's because of safety. I'm telling you, it it may those may be factors but the nfl makes money by putting football on televisions and the nfl does not make money when it has to reschedule games it does not uh look like it's under control when they have to cancel or postpone games indefinitely be mindful of where those rules are coming from regardless of how you feel about them be mindful of where those rules are coming from This is a nasty time to, what's the best way to phrase this? This is a really hard time to be a fan when there's players that you love that don't and aren't sharing the same ideals as you publicly. Some communities don't have as big a time with it as we do, but here in Buffalo, we have a huge problem when we feel players aren't representing who we want them to be. Football is entertainment and these players are people. Some of you out there may know some of these players. I don't know any. I do not wish to be in the circumstances that they find themselves in with the scrutiny that they're going to face over trying to do their job. I wish all the players on the Buffalo Bills the best of luck. I really hope that um, the team and the organization and the players find the best way to navigate the rules that are set out by the league. And always, you know, I, I hope that everything works out in a way that we can look back at this time months from now and say, man, that was really tough. Yeah, it didn't look good there at that point. But I feel, I feel like our organization has the best handle on this that they can. I don't know if a lot of people could say that right now, but I, I trust this organization to handle this the best that they can. And putting winning football team out there, win some football games, and we can all celebrate at a Super Bowl championship parade at the end of it. That's, that's what I'm hoping. There's not much for us to talk about here anymore when it comes to this. And the, and the entire reason that I say that is because we here aren't going to project personal opinion uh, into a situation. It's not what we do. It's not what Mario and I do. It's not what uh, Joe and it's not what uh, Joe is going to do. It's not what you know Mike and Tommy are going to do. Uh, we're all on the same page there. Football is an incredible experience. We love it, and we love hanging with you guys and partying with you guys and talking about the Bills. Uh, but that topic, we're just not really going to delve into until uh, we get better understanding of the rules, um, how it'll be enforced, uh, what those relationships are like. And that's going to be the stuff that we talk about. We're not going to talk about independent players and their decisions and why they're making decisions. We're not going to do that. Um, the reporters can ask those questions in, inside the, uh, the press conferences. Uh, I think a lot of that is because they need to understand whether players' spots on rosters are actually in jeopardy over vaccination status. I think that's a fair question. Um, I know it's going to come in mass, and I know people made a big deal on Twitter over, you know, questions being asked in a press conference. I don't envy in any way journalists who have to cover this team um, and having to ask those questions, but there's a reason for them, and, and I'm willing to be patient and find out what those are. Um, but the one thing I'm not patient for is to get to some football that actually matters. Um, I think we can all get there, and I, uh, I hope you guys understand um, – what we're trying to portray here and what we're trying to say um, from all of us here at hashtag sports. Uh, we love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.